Welcome back. This is Lesson 3.4 Journal. We are comparing and ordering rational numbers. I will be able to correctly compare and order rational numbers. I will also be able to apply them to real life situations. Vocabulary for this lesson, positive means above zero, negative means below zero, and a rational number is a number. So when comparing, when comparing numbers, it is easiest if you compare the numbers in the same format. Meaning, compare decimals to decimals, or compare fractions to fractions to the others. So change it change it to fit whatever is easiest for you. Personally, I just turn all of my numbers into That's because it's so easy to line up the decimals and just compare instead of trying to get a common denominator. So, here we have 2, 0, and 23 hundredths, or 1 fifth. Instead of turning them all into common denominator fractions, I'm just going to turn every fraction I see into a decimal. It makes it super easy for me to compare them. So, how do I turn 1 fifth into a decimal? I do 1 divide by. 5. Remember the numerator divide by the denominator? So 5 goes into 1 0 times. I'm just going to put on a decimal and annex a 0 and keep going. 5 goes into 10 2 times. Minus 10 gives me 0. So here I have, this is the same as 0 and 2 tenths. How does 0 and 2 tenths compare to 23 hundredths? Well, I can put a zero on here if I want to. I haven't changed the value. What's larger? Positive 20 hundredths or positive 23 hundredths? By doing this, I can see that these tenths are the same, but these are not. This has three more hundredths than this one. So I know that 23 hundredths is larger than one fifth. Now these ones are already in order. Or they're already both in decimal format. So I'm just going to compare place values. Now here's the thing. When you're dealing with negative numbers, remember that the more, the bigger the number seems in a negative, the smaller it really is. Remember money? Would you rather owe more or less? So here, I'm going to compare these place values. See the ones place is negative two. So the next place value is six. So those are the same. Then I go to this one. This is zero. This one, I'm just going to write it up here so it's easier to see how I'm comparing them. Okay, so this is here. So these are the same. These are the same. This one here is even the same. But here, this has zero and this one has six. But which one is closer to the left on the number line? It's going to be this one. Because it's negative, this one's just a little tiny bit further to the left. So which one of these is bigger? Negative two and six tenths, because this one has six thousandths more in the negative direction. So when you're comparing negative to negative, the one that seems larger is farther from zero, so it's farther to the left. All right, here we've got a lovely fraction and a decimal. I don't like to compare decimals and fractions. I want to turn this into a decimal so I can compare it as a fraction. So they're both negative, so that tells me they're both to the left of zero. Now if I turn this into a fraction, or fraction into a decimal, I'm going to do three divided by seven. Seven goes into three zero times. So I'm going to annex a decimal and a zero. Three, or seven goes into 30. 
four times. Okay, so looking at this, you see my tenths place are going to be the same. All right, so minus 28. Probably should have picked a little bit bigger space to do this. So I got a two. I'm going to annex another zero, bring it down. Seven goes into 20 three times. Three, oh no, it doesn't. Two times. Two, two times seven is 14. Okay, I can stop there. I'm not done with this fraction. It's actually going to go on for a long time. It'll be an ugly repeating decimal. But I've gone far enough to know which one of these numbers is bigger. This one in the tenths place has a four, so does this one. This one in the hundreds place has a two, and this one has a four. So this one is about negative zero and 42 hundredths. This one is 44 hundredths. So if I'm comparing, they're both negative. What would I rather have? Would I rather owe 42 cents or 44 cents? That would make three, negative three sevenths just barely larger than negative 44 hundredths. Okay, let's keep practicing. Negative one fiftieth and negative two hundredths. Okay, I want to turn this fraction into a decimal. So I'm going to do one divided by 50. Okay, and for time, I'm going to go ahead and let you use a calculator. So pull out your calculator from your math journal. I'll be using mine for the remaining of the time. Since we've already practiced a couple by hand, we're going to do this just to speed up our notes a little bit. So we have one divided by 50. One would be inside the box, 50 outside the box. What do we get? We get zero and two hundredths. So what do we know if we have zero and two hundredths and zero and two hundredths? They are equal to each other. This is the fraction form of this number, so they are equal. negative two thirds. If I were going to do this out by hand, I'd put two inside the box, divide it by three. I'm going to let you use the calculator for this. So two divide by three gives you 0 0.66666 repeating. And this is just 0 0.66, but I want you to note something. See this negative on this? Is there any negative on this one? Okay, we didn't have to do the math here because we should have seen a great big red flag here saying, hey, look at that, negative, positive, which one has to be larger? The positive, no matter what, will always be larger than the negative. All right, here it says plot the following numbers on the number line and then list them in order from least to greatest, or greatest to least. So if we put these on the number line, we're just going to put them about where they belong. This one, we're not going to get perfectly accurate. So this one is two and one third. That means two whole units above zero. Positive one, two, and one third. If I were to cut this into three equalish pieces, then two and one third would be about right there. Okay, if you'll notice between zero and one, there are 10 pieces. So each one of those represents one tenth to kind of give you an idea. Another thing we could have done is we could have done one divided by three, because that's what one third is. So it would be two, because I had two whole units, and three tenths, three hundredths, three thousandths. So right here, you see where I'm at two? one, two, three, and just a little bit above there. Okay, so two ways to look at that. Negative four and three, 35 hundredths, that's going to go four units below zero. So one, two, three, four units below zero, and then I need to go 35 hundredths more. Well, there's three tenths and halfway between that. So one, two, three, and a little bit more negative than that, so right about there. See how I'm between the three and the four there? So negative four and 35 hundredths would fit right there on the number one. Negative one and five eighths. I'm going to turn five eighths into a decimal just to make it easier to put on this number line that's already in tenths. 
So 5 divided by 8. There's my decimal portion. 6, 2, 5. But this is a negative 1 and 5 eighths. So this would be negative 1 and 625,000. See where I got that from? Okay, so with that, I'm going to go down negative 1 and then 6 tenths more. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tenths more. That would make sense because 5 eighths is just a little bit larger than 1 half. See how I'm just a little bit past 1 half? So 6 tenths and a little bit more, so right about there. Negative 1 and 5 eighths. Okay, 55 hundredths. I'm going to go between 0 and 1. That's 5 tenths and a little more. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths. Not quite 6 tenths, so somewhere right here in the middle. Positive 55 hundredths, about right there. Negative 7 tenths. This one I can get exact because this has been split into tenths. This is below 0, not quite negative 1. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of the 10 pieces below 0. Negative 7 tenths, right there. And the last one, we have negative 45 hundredths. So that means I'm going to be negative. I'm about 4 tenths and a little bit more. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 tenths below 0. Just a little bit more. Negative 0 and 45 hundredths right there. Okay, when I can put them on the number line, it makes it easy for me to put them in order from greatest to least. The greatest number is going to be the one farthest to the right. So positive 2 and 1 third, I put down the original number I'm given. The next largest is 55 hundredths. Next largest, negative 45 hundredths. Next largest, negative 7 tenths. Next largest, negative 1 and 5 eighths. And the last one, negative 4 and 35 hundredths. So that is in order from greatest to least. Now, I want you to look at something here. Notice how all, because I'm going greatest to least, you notice how all the positive numbers have been listed first, then we go with the negatives. So with that, you can kind of mentally separate the positives from the negatives. What I'll do is I like to compare the negatives and the positives to each other, and then if it's once least to greatest, I put the negative ones first, then the positive ones, or if it wants greatest to least, positive to negative. But Know where they go on the number line. This is the most to the right, which is why it's the greatest. Now, what if we are comparing numbers, but we don't want to use a number line? If you don't want to make a number line, how can we compare 2 and 2 thirds, negative 2 and 303 thousandths, negative 2 and 1 third, 2 and 66 thousandths, 2 and 33 fiftieths, negative 2 and 3 tenths, and negative 2 points and 6 tenths? How can we do that without making a number line? Okay, remember how up here we were comparing by turning them both into decimals? Well, if I can turn all of these into decimals, it will be a lot easier to compare. Also, if I separate the negatives from the positives, then I don't have to look at so many, and then I can just list them. So, I want least to greatest. So, I'm going to put all my negative numbers over here. And I'm going to put all my positive numbers over here. So if I do that, I'm just listing what I have right now. So we have positive 2 and 2 thirds, negative 2.303, negative 2 and 1 third. That way I don't even have to compare the positive with the negative because they're kind of already separated for me. 2 and 66 hundredths, 2 and 33 fiftieths, negative two and three tenths, and negative two 
2 and 6 tenths. Okay. Like I said, to make it easier on me, I like them all in their decimal form. You can turn them all into fractions. It's just a lot harder to get them to be the same as fast. When you turn them into decimals, it's really easy to line up the decimals and compare their decimal place values. So, these are the original numbers. I'm going to rewrite them as a decimal over here, unless they're already a decimal. So, negative 2 and 1 third. I'm going to turn 1 third into a decimal by using... Pull, go ahead and pull out your calculator. So one third would be one divided by three. And see how it's point three 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 three. The only reason this stops is because it is a calculator and it can't fit it on forever. This is actually a repeating decimal. I just need as many place values here to compare so I can compare everything. So I'm just going to write two point three, three, three. Oh, don't forget our negative signs. Okay. Two and three tenths. I know that one. Three tenths would mean that there would be a three in the tenths place. So without the calculator, I don't even need that. And then negative two and six tenths. Do you see how I'm lining up all my decimals? All right. I'm going to fill in these with zeros. And now I'm just going to compare them. Now since they're negative, remember, the more, the bigger the negative number seems, the smaller it really is. So looking at these, all these have a negative 2 in the whole unit. So I'm going to now look at the tenths. This has 3 tenths, 3 tenths, 3 tenths, and 6 tenths. 6 tenths seems larger, but that means it's farther to the left because it's a negative number. So I know this number I have in my negatives. So number one is going to go here. Now which one of these is the next smallest? Well, if these are the same, now I look here. I have a zero, a three, and a zero. Remember, because we're looking at negatives, we actually want the one that looks larger. So three hundredths is going to be farther to the left then zero hundredths. So that means that this number is going to be the second smallest we have. Once we know its place, now we're going to just continue to compare these. So this is zero and this is zero. This is three and this is zero. This one appears larger, so it's going to be just a little bit farther to the left. That puts this one the next smallest. That means of the negative numbers, this one is closest to zero. Okay, so with that, I know that these are going to be smaller than my positives, so down here I'm going to rewrite these in the order that we know they're going to be. So we know that negative two and six tenths is the smallest. That puts negative two and one third next. Then we had negative two and three hundred three thousandths. And then our largest of the negative numbers was negative two and three tenths. Now we just got to sort out these three positive numbers and put them where they belong. So I'm going to turn two and two thirds into a decimal. This one's already a decimal, but let's write it out so we can line up our place values. So, two-thirds, I'm going to take and do two, divide by three. Okay, there's our decimal portion, six, 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 six. Okay, this one repeats on forever. I only need enough place values, though, so that I can accurately compare these. So, this would be two point, our decimal portion, six, six, six. That's enough for me to compare. Let's go ahead and turn this into a decimal. So this would be two, because it's two whole units, and let's figure out what 33 fiftieths is. 33 divided by 50, we get just 0.66, but it's a terminating decimal. It stops right there. So six, six. I'm just going to annex a zero here so I can compare. Now, 
2, 2, 2, those are all the same, so I go to the next place value. 6, 0, and 6. 0 is smaller than 6 or 6. That tells me this is the next smallest. Okay, now of these remaining ones, this is 6, this is 6. Here we have something different, 6 and 0. 0 is smaller than 6. Since we're talking about positive numbers, that makes this one the next smallest. And that would leave this one as our largest number. So, of the positive numbers, this one is the smallest. Then, 2 and 33 fiftieths. And last but not least, 2 and 2 thirds is the largest. Alright. Now that we've done all that, you can see why it's nice to turn them all into the same format. If I were going to turn these all into fractions, then I'd have to get common denominators and it'd be ugly, ugly, ugly. So, make it easier on yourself, just turn them all into decimals. Okay, rate yourself on this concept. How do you feel about comparing decimals and fractions in both negative and positive? Three or four. Take a picture and submit it on your passport in Google Classroom.